Hello and welcome to Lucy's Mind. I'm Majid and in this video I'll be solving another chemistry paper from Cambridge IGCSE Core Chemistry. This is paper 1, variant 1 from May June 2020. You can also go to the specific question of your need by following the link given in the video description. Let's begin. Question 1. Nitrogen is heated in a balloon which expands slightly. So we have heat and expansion. Which statements about the molecules of nitrogen are correct? Heating increases the temperature of the gas which in turn increases the kinetic energy of the molecules. When the kinetic energy increases the molecules move more quickly. So 2 is correct. 1 is they move further apart. So Upon more collisions, what happens is that the spaces between the molecules also increase due to which gas expands. So therefore there are more spaces. 3. They remain the same distance apart. This is wrong because intermolecular distance increases. 4. Their speeds remain unchanged as we are increasing the temperature so the kinetic energy increases. So therefore speed also increases. So option 1 and 2 are correct. So therefore answer is A. Question 2. Which piece of apparatus should be used to measure exactly 21.4 cm3 of water? A is 25 cm3 beaker. Beaker is inaccurate because the difference between the divisions is quite high so therefore we cannot choose beaker. B is 25 cm3 pipette. Now the problem with the pipette is that it can only measure the fixed volume. So it can only measure 25 cm3 not less than that. C is 50 cm3 burette. In burette, the minimum division is of 0.1 cm3. So this one can be used to measure 21.4 cm3 of water. So this could be correct. D is 50 cm3 measuring cylinder. Now the minimum value or the volume that can be measured in measuring cylinder is 1 cm3. So therefore, this is also wrong for 21.4 cm3. So the only correct option is C. Question 3. Which method of separation is used to separate a soluble solid from its solution? A is chromatography. Now chromatography is a separation technique but it is used to separate more than two soluble solids from a solution so therefore we are not going to use this one. B is condensation. Condensation is used to convert gas molecules into liquid form. C is crystallization. In crystallization, we make super saturated solution of a soluble salt and then we leave it to dry. So therefore, this can be used for separation of soluble solid from its solution. D is filtration. Filtration is used to separate insoluble substance. So therefore, we are not going to use this. So therefore, correct answer is C. Question 4. The atomic number and nucleon number of potassium atom are shown. We can see that the atomic number is 19 and nucleon number is 39. How many protons, neutrons and electrons are present in a potassium ion? As the atomic number of potassium is 19, so therefore there are 19 protons present in one atom of potassium. The nucleon number is 39, it means that the number of protons and neutrons is equal to 39. So in order to find the number of neutrons, we will be subtracting nucleon number and atomic number. So neutrons is equal to 39 minus 19 which is 20 neutrons. As there is positive charge on potassium ion, so therefore one electron is lost. So therefore number of electron will decrease from 19 and there are 18 electrons present. So therefore option A is correct. Question 5. Sodium is in group 1 of the periodic table. Chlorine is in group 7 of the periodic table. Sodium and chlorine combine to form a compound. Which statement about the combination of sodium and chlorine atom is correct? Now sodium is a metal. It belongs to group 1. Chlorine is a non-metal as it belongs to group 7. When making bond, sodium will lose one electron and chlorine will gain one electron. So sodium will become Na plus one. And after gaining electron, chlorine will become chloride ion. And the bonding between these two types of ions is called ionic bond. And it is formed by complete transfer of electron from metal to non-metal. A. Both sodium and chlorine lose electrons. Now only sodium loses electron, chlorine gains electron, so therefore this is wrong. 
B. Both sodium and chlorine gain electrons. No, only chlorine gains electron. C. Sodium loses electron and chlorine gains electron. This is correct because ionic bond is formed. D. Sodium gains electron and chlorine loses electron. This is incorrect. So therefore, answer is C. Question 6. The electronic structure of two atoms P and Q are shown. P and Q combine together to form a compound. What is the type of bonding in the compound and what is the formula of the compound? As we can see, there are 7 electrons in the outermost shell of P. So therefore, P belongs to 7th group in the periodic table. While Q has just 1 electron in the outermost shell. So therefore, Q belongs to 1st group in the periodic table. So it means Q is a metal and P is a non-metal. So the bond between metal and non-metal is ionic bond and Q will lose one electron and P will gain one electron. When Q loses one electron, the inner shell of Q is already complete. So when one electron is gained by P, there are eight electrons in the outermost shell. So therefore type of bonding is ionic and the formula is PQ because one atom of P and one atom of Q combine together. So answer is A. Question 7. The structure of diamond and graphite are shown. These are the diagrams of diamond and graphite. Which statement about diamond and graphite is correct? A. Diamond and graphite have low melting points. Now there are strong intermolecular forces of attraction so therefore the melting points are not low, they are high. So this is incorrect. B. Diamond and graphite have mobile electrons. In diamond, we can see that each carbon atom is combined to four other carbon atoms. So the all the four electrons are involved in covalent bonding. So therefore, there are no free electrons present in diamond. While in graphite, we can see that one carbon atom makes three covalent bonds with three other carbon atoms. And the fourth electron is free to move. So therefore, graphite is a good conductor of electricity while diamond is bad conductor. So diamond does not have mobile electrons while graphite does have. So therefore, this is incorrect. C. Diamond and graphite have layered structures. We can see that the structure of diamond is tetrahedral while the structure of graphite is layered. In D. Diamond and graphite contain strong covalent bonds between carbon atoms. This is true for both of them. So therefore, answer is D. Question 8. Aluminum oxide has the formula Al2O3. Which statement about aluminum oxide is correct? A. 2 grams of aluminum atoms are combined with 3 grams of oxygen atom. Let's find out the ratio between aluminum and oxygen in grams. So finding the molecular mass, we have 2 aluminum atoms. So 2 into 27 is 54. There are 3 oxygen atoms in aluminum oxide, so therefore 3 oxygen, so we can multiply 3 by 16, which is the atomic mass of oxygen, we have 48. So in terms of grams, it means 54 grams of aluminum combined with 48 grams of oxygen. Overall molecular mass of aluminum oxide is 102. So finding the ratio between aluminum and oxygen, we have 54 grams of aluminum and 48 grams of oxygen. Now simplifying this one we have 9 ratio 8 grams each. So 9 grams of aluminum combined with 8 grams of oxygen to form Al2O3. So therefore A is wrong. B 2 gram of aluminum atoms are combined with 3 grams of oxygen molecules. Again this is incorrect. C Aluminum oxide has a relative formula mass of 102. We have already found the molecular mass which is 102 so this is correct. D. Pure aluminum oxide contains a higher mass of oxygen than of aluminum. Now the mass of oxygen is 48 grams and of aluminum is 54 grams so therefore oxygen has a lower mass. So correct option is C. Question 9. Which products are formed when dilute sulfuric acid undergoes electrolysis? When dilute sulfuric acid is dissolved in water, we have H positive ions, OH negative ions of water, and sulfate ions from sulfuric acid. H plus ion is cation, 
while these two are anions. Now cation moves towards cathode and forms hydrogen gas. While among these anions, hydroxide will move toward the anode and will form oxygen gas. A. At the anode, we have oxygen. This is correct. At the cathode, we have hydrogen gas. This is also correct. B. We have hydrogen at the anode. This is wrong. C. We have sulfur dioxide form. This is also incorrect. In D, we have oxygen at the anode and sulfur dioxide at the cathode. This is incorrect. So therefore, answer is A. Question 10. Which element is not used as a fuel? A is carbon. Carbon reacts with oxygen and combusts to give carbon dioxide along with water molecules and energy in the form of heat. B is helium. Helium is from noble gas group or group 8 of the periodic table. So helium does not react with oxygen as the outermost shell of helium is already complete. So this could be the possible answer. C is hydrogen gas. Again, hydrogen combines with oxygen to form water molecules and a lot of energy is also released. D is uranium. Uranium is a radioactive element which is used to produce electricity based on the radioactivity. So this is also not the option. The correct option is B. Question 11. The energy level diagram shows the energy of reactants and products in a chemical reaction. Which row correctly describes the energy change and the type of reaction shown? On x-axis, we have progress of reaction. Now the reaction proceeds in this direction. And on y-axis, we have energy of the components. As we can see, the energy of the reactants is quite high as compared to energy of the product. So it means that the energy is released out into the surroundings. When energy is released in a chemical reaction, so it means that the chemical reaction is exothermic in nature. Let's move towards the options. A. Description of energy change. We have energy is given out to the surroundings. Yes, this is correct. And the type of reaction is endothermic. No, it is not endo. It should be exothermic. B is energy is given out to the surroundings and the reaction is exothermic. Now, this is the correct option. So, therefore, answer is B. Question 12. Which diagram represents a chemical change? A. In A, we can see that there are spaces between the atoms and then the spaces are removed. So therefore, this is a physical change, not a chemical change. So it is incorrect. In B, you can see there are spaces between the molecules. The spaces were less on this side while the spaces are larger on this side. So B is also a physical change. In C, we have molecules in black color and atoms separated out. So there are spaces among them and the spaces are increased. So this is also a physical change. In D, we can see that the molecules have similar atoms on the rectant side and there are two atoms present. On the product side, we can see that the black has combined with the white one. So therefore, this is a chemical change as the atoms are exchanged between the molecules. So this could be correct. So therefore, answer is D. Question 13. The rate of reaction between magnesium and hydrochloric acid is investigated. The volume of hydrogen gas given off at different times is measured. The results are shown. We can see we have volume of hydrogen on y-axis and time on x-axis. Which conclusions are correct? 1. The rate is fastest between 0 and 20 seconds. Now, according to the graph, we can see that between 0 and 20 seconds, the graph is steep. So, therefore, rate of reaction is fast. This is correct. 2. The maximum volume of hydrogen given off is 22 cm3. Now, we have straight line and no more hydrogen is being produced. So, let's find out how much volume is produced. So, it is 22 cm3. This is also correct. 3. At 40 seconds, 20 cm3 of hydrogen is given off. Let's find out the gas given off at 40 seconds. This is 40 seconds. And the gas given off is this one. So we have 
19 centimeter cube of gas produced so this is incorrect option 1 and 2 are correct so therefore answer is a question 14 which reaction can be easily reversed a is dissolving zinc in hydrochloric acid we have zinc metal it will react with hcl and form zinc chloride along with hydrogen gas now this is not a reversible reaction this is incorrect b is fermenting glucose with yeast now glucose is c6h12o6 and it ferments to produce ethanol along with carbon dioxide this is also a chemical change so therefore this is irreversible c is heating hydrated cobalt to chloride in hydrated cobalt to chloride water molecules are present and they are physically adsorbed by the salt so therefore upon heating what happens that the water will be removed from the salt so therefore salt will show a change in color we can re-add the water molecule into the salt to make it hydrated again so c is a physical change this is correct d is the rusting of an iron nail in rusting what happens that the iron will convert into iron plus 3 ion and this is a chemical change so therefore this is wrong so correct option is c question 15 carbon reacts with silver oxide to form carbon dioxide and silver which substance is reduced let's write the chemical equation between carbon and silver oxide we have ag2o it converts into carbon dioxide and silver metal let's find out the oxidation states for carbon we have zero as it is in elemental form for silver again we have zero as it is in elemental form in silver oxide the oxidation state on one oxygen atom is minus two so therefore the oxidation state on one silver atom will be plus one while the charge on two silver will be plus two in carbon dioxide we have two oxygen so there will be minus four charge on two oxygen atoms while on single oxygen we have minus two and on carbon we would have exactly opposite of minus four which is plus four now we can see the carbon is changing from zero to plus four which is oxidation while silver changes from plus 1 to 0 which is reduction and oxygen remains minus 2 so which substance is reduced it is not carbon it is not carbon dioxide it is not silver as silver is the product it should be silver oxide as this one is being reduced so correct option is D Question 16. The graph shows how the pH of a solution changes as an acid is added to an alkali. Now this is a neutralization reaction. Acid reacts with alkali to form salt and water. Which letter represents the area of graph where both acid and salt are present? Now the pH of acid is below 7. While the pH of alkali is more than 7. Salt does not affect the pH and also water does not affect the pH change. A. We have 14 pH so it means we have alkali present in larger quantity. In B we have alkali because the pH is almost 14 and small amount of acid is also present. In C we have alkali present and acid is also present the pH becomes equal to almost 6 in D the pH becomes nearer to the 0 so therefore only acid is present and alkali is gone now the alkali has reacted with acid to form salt and water so therefore salt and water are also present so it is D where acid and salt both are present Question 17. Phosphorus is an element in group 5 of the periodic table. It burns in air to form an oxide which dissolves in water to form a solution with a pH of 1. Which row describes this oxide of phosphorus? Group 5 of the periodic table belongs to non-metals. So phosphorus is a non-metal. 
while non-metal oxides are acidic in nature as phosphorus oxide dissolves in water to form a solution with pH of 1 so it means this is acidic solution. Let's move towards the option. We have metal oxide, no this is incorrect. We have non-metal oxide, yes phosphorus is a non-metal so therefore its oxide is non-metal so it should be C or D. We have acidic oxide, yes it is an acidic oxide because the pH is less. So this is the correct option, it is not basic oxide, so therefore C is the answer. Question 18, the apparatus shown is used to prepare aqueous copper to sulfate. In first diagram we have solid X which is put into solution Y and heat it. Then afterwards what happens that the solution is filtered and excess of solid is left behind on the filter paper and copper to sulfate solution is filtrate. What are X and Y? A is copper and aqueous iron to sulfate. Now copper cannot displace sulfate from iron because copper is less reactive than iron. So therefore this is incorrect as the solution will be of iron to sulfate while here we have copper to sulfate solution. B is copper to chloride and dilute sulfuric acid. Now they will react together to form copper sulfate and HCl. All these four are soluble substances, so therefore there should not be any excess of solid X. So this is incorrect. In C, we have copper 2 oxide and dilute sulfuric acid. Now copper oxide reacts with sulfuric acid to form copper sulfate along with water molecules. Now excess of copper 2 oxide, copper 2 oxide is black in color and it is insoluble in water. So after heating, the excess will be filtered off as excess of solid X. So therefore C options seems to be correct. D is sulfur with aqueous copper 2 chloride. As there is no copper sulfate among these, so therefore this is incorrect. So the option in which X is solid and in excess and also forms copper sulfate is C. Question 19. Two tests are carried out on a substance Z. Test 1 is a flame. Test produces a red flame. Test 2. Z is dissolved in water and dilute nitric acid is added. Followed by aqueous silver nitrate, a yellow precipitate is produced. What is substance Z? We have two metals. One is lithium and lithium. Second is sodium. Now the lithium atom produces red flame. while sodium produces yellow flame. So the correct option is among A and B. Now let's find out whether it is bromide or iodide. Now bromide reacts with silver to form silver bromide and iodine reacts with silver to form silver iodide. Silver bromide is cream color while silver iodide is yellow precipitate. So according to the question, we should have a red flame and yellow precipitate. So therefore this is lithium iodide. Question 20. The elements in period 3 of the periodic table as shown. Which statements about the element in period 3 are correct? Number 1. Sodium, magnesium and aluminum are metals. Sodium belongs to group 1. It is a metal. Magnesium is also a metal. Aluminum is a metal too. So 1 is correct. 2. Sulfur, chlorine and argon are non-metals. Sulfur belong to group 6, chlorine to group 7 and argon to group 8 and they are non-metals. This is correct. 3. Silicon, phosphorus and sulfur are metals. Now these are not metals, they are non-metals so therefore this is wrong. So only option 1 and 2 are correct so therefore answer is A. Question 21. A group 1 metal, lithium, sodium or potassium is reacted with a group 7 element, could be chlorine, bromine or iodine. Which compound is formed when group 1 of highest density reacts with group 7 of lowest density? We have two group 1 elements, one is lithium and second is potassium. So potassium is more dense as compared to lithium. So it should be potassium chloride or potassium iodide. Now in group 7 we have fluorine chlorine, bromine and iodine 
and the density increases down in the group so therefore among chlorine bromine and iodine chlorine is of lowest density so potassium reacts with chlorine to form potassium chloride question 22 the properties of the element titanium can be predicted from its position in the periodic table which row identifies the properties of titanium in the periodic table we can see that titanium belongs to d block or you can also say transition elements let's find out the properties of transition elements a is can be used as a catalyst so this is true then we have conducts electricity when solid this is also true because titanium is a metal and it consists of free electrons next is has low density this is wrong because metals have high density last one is forms colored compounds this is correct for transition elements so therefore correct option is b question 23 a balloon is filled with helium helium is a noble gas and makes the balloon rise up in the air the density of air is 1.23 grams per decimeter cube which gas is helium as in the question we can see that helium makes the balloon rise up so it means helium is less dense than air so the density of helium should be less than 1.23 so it is not c or d it should be a or b reaction with oxygen as we know helium is group 8 element and a noble gas and it does not react with any oxygen so therefore b is correct so therefore it is the answer Question twenty four: Which property is shown by all metals? A. They are extracted from their ores by heating with carbon. Now, more reactive metals are not extracted by heating with carbon; they are extracted by electrolysis. So, this is not correct for all metals. B. Is they conduct electricity? This is correct for all metals because all metals contain free electrons present in them. C they form acidic oxides now metal oxides are basic in nature they are not acidic as they form base upon dissolving in water D they react with hydrochloric acid to form hydrogen now more reactive metals do react with hydrochloric acid but less reactive metals do not so therefore it is incorrect so answer is B Question twenty five: The properties of four metals we have W, X, Y, and Z are shown. W it does not react with cold water, but reacts with steam. X it does not react with water or dilute acid, but the oxide of X is reduced by carbon. Start Y the oxide of Y is not reduced by carbon, but Y reacts vigorously with cold water. Z it does not react with water or steam but reacts with dilute acid. What is the order of reactivity of the elements starting with the most reactive? First one is W we can see it does not react with cold water but reacts with steam while X does not react with water at all. So therefore it means W is more reactive than X. In X we can see that the oxide of X is reduced by carbon so it means X is less reactive than carbon while the oxide of y is not reduced by carbon so it means y is more reactive than carbon so therefore in the reactivity between x and y y should be more reactive than x among y and z we can see y reacts vigorously with cold water but z does not react with water or steam it means y is more reactive than z In Z we can see that it reacts with dilute acid while X does not react with dilute acid so therefore Z is more reactive than X so we can write Z is more reactive than X Among W and Y we can see W does not react with cold water but Y reacts vigorously with cold water it means Y is more reactive than W As Y is more reactive than X and then z and w so therefore y is the most reactive element so it should be c or d then we have w and z let's find out whether w is more reactive than z or z is more reactive than w in w we can see it does not react with cold water but reacts with steam while z does not react with water or steam so it means w is more reactive than z 
so w should be written before z so therefore answer is c question 26 molten iron from the blast furnace contains impurities the process of turning the impure iron into steel involves blowing oxygen into the molten iron and adding calcium oxide what are the reasons for blowing in oxygen and adding calcium oxide as we know that in steel carbon contents are present so therefore adjusting the amount of carbon requires oxygen to be blown and oxygen reacts with carbon content to form carbon dioxide Calcium oxide is added for removing impurities such as silicon dioxide and it converts SiO2 into silicates. These silicates are removed in the form of slag. So among the options in A we have carbon is removed by reacting with oxygen. This is true. B is also true. And in adding calcium oxide, we have reacts with acidic impurities making slag as silicon dioxide is acidic in nature. So this is also correct. B is reacts with slag and so removes it. No, it does not react with slag. It actually reacts with silicon dioxide and removes it in the form of slag. So this is incorrect. In C, we have iron reacts with oxygen. This is wrong. Again, in D, we have iron reacts with oxygen. So correct option is A. Question 27. Which row describes two uses of the named steel? We have types of steel. One is mild steel and second is stainless steel. Now in mild steel we have 99.7% iron and 0.3% carbon. Mild steel is quite strong steel so therefore it is used in car bodies and also in chemical plants. Second is stainless steel. The composition of stainless steel is 70% iron, 20% chromium and 10% nickel. Now stainless steel is used in cutlery and in chemical plant mild steel is used. Similarly car bodies mild steel is used in cutlery stainless steel is used and mild steel is used in both car bodies and chemical plant not in cutlery so therefore correct option is b question 28 which statement shows that liquid water is pure a it boils at 100 degrees centigrade this is true because pure water boils at 100 degrees centigrade and this is also a test for a pure substance as pure substance always has fixed boiling point b it has a ph value of 7 even if there are some dissolved salts in pure water, it would have pH of 7. So therefore, this is not uh, the correct indication for purity. So this is wrong. C. It turns blue cobalt to chloride pink. It is true if water is present. So therefore, this is not a test for purity. This is just for the indication of water. D. It turns white copper to sulfate blue. Again, this is a test for presence of water, not for the purity of water. So the only test for purity is the fixed boiling point. Question 29. Some gases are present in clean air while other gases are only present in polluted air. Which row is correct? A gas present in clean air. We can have argon. This is a noble gas and it is not reactive and neither it is pollutant. Then we have sulfur dioxide. Sulfur dioxide is acidic gas and it is present in polluted air. On this side, we have a gas only present in polluted air. So carbon dioxide, it is also present in clean air. So therefore, this is incorrect. Nitrogen dioxide is acidic gas and it is present in polluted air. Similarly, carbon dioxide is wrong and NO2 is correct. So therefore, option B is correct. Question 30. The diagram shows experiments to investigate rusting of iron nails. In which test tube do the nails rust? As we know that for rusting what happens that iron converts into iron plus 3 ion and there are two major factors for rusting one is oxygen and second is H2O and salt water also increases the process of rusting because salt behaves as an electrolyte. Let's see the options in one we have tap water so there is oxygen present and there is water so therefore it will rust 
in 2 we have salt water so it will also rust and the rusting will be faster as compared to 1 in 3 we have layer of oil now what does oil do oil prevents the entering of oxygen into the water and we have boiled water now boiled water removes soluble air or soluble oxygen so 3 is incorrect only we have two correct option 1 and 2 so therefore answer is B question 31 which mixture contains all of the elements in a typical fertilizer now the major components of fertilizers are nitrogen phosphorus and potassium let's find out which compounds contain these elements in a we have ammonium nitrate so we can find nitrogen from this one in this we have calcium and phosphorus now potassium is absent so therefore a is incorrect in b we have ammonium we can get nitrogen from ammonium we can get phosphorus from phosphates and we also have potassium so this is correct option in C we have potassium nitrogen from nitrate and nitrogen from ammonium and chlorine phosphorus is absent so therefore this is incorrect in D we have potassium carbonate ammonium nitrate again phosphorus is absent so this is incorrect so correct option is B Question 32 which processes produce methane gas? One is complete combustion of carbon containing compounds. Now what happens? Carbon combusts completely to form carbon dioxide. It does not form methane so therefore this is incorrect. Two is decomposition of vegetation. Now vegetation decomposes to form methane gas so this is true. Three is digestion in animals. It also produces methane gas and it is quite significant in digestion in cows 4. We have respiration in animals now what happens in respiration is that glucose burns in the presence of oxygen to form carbon dioxide and water so therefore this is incorrect so option 2 and 3 are correct so therefore answer is C question 33 the list shows 4 methods that were suggested for the formation of carbon dioxide Number 1. We have cracking methane using steam. Now methane cannot be cracked further because it just consists of 1 carbon and 4 hydrogen atoms only. So therefore this is incorrect. 2. Is action of heat on carbonate. Let's suppose we have calcium carbonate. When it is decomposed in the presence of heat it forms calcium oxide and carbon dioxide. So this is true. In 3. We have complete combustion of methane methane combusts in the presence of oxygen and it forms carbon dioxide along with water so this is true reaction of a carbonate with oxygen now carbonate does not react with oxygen so therefore this is incorrect so only option 2 and 3 are correct so therefore answer is c question 34 a student suggests three uses of calcium carbonate which is limestone one manufacture of cement as we know that in cement what happens that we have calcium carbonate which is limestone and also clay both are present in powdered form so this is correct two is manufacture of iron in manufacture of iron in the blast furnace we need to remove impurities such as silicon dioxide so therefore calcium carbonate is needed as calcium carbonate produces calcium oxide and calcium oxide will remove silicon dioxide in the form of silicates CaSiO3 will be removed in the form of slag so 2 is correct in 3 we have treating alkaline soils calcium carbonate dissolves in water to form calcium hydroxide which is alkaline in nature so therefore it can be used to treat acidic soils so this is incorrect so option 1 and 2 are correct so therefore answer is A Question 35 which list shows the fractions obtained from distillation of petroleum in order of increasing boiling points. As we know that larger the number of carbon atoms so therefore higher will be the boiling point as intermolecular forces will become stronger. Let's find out the number of carbon atoms. We have bitumen, diesel oil, gasoline and kerosene. Let's first find out the number of carbon atoms among these components. So we have refinery gas and the number of carbon atoms are 1, 2, 4. 
So this one has the least boiling point. Then on second number we have gasoline. And the number of carbon atoms are from 5 to 6. On third one we have naphthalene, which is also called naphtha. The carbon numbers are from 6 to 10. Then we have kerosene having carbon from 10 to 15 then diesel having carbon number 15 to 20 then fuel oil carbon atoms from 20 to 30 then lubricating oil having carbon number 30 to 50 and in the last we have bitumen having carbon number greater than 50. Now the boiling point increases when the number of carbon atom increase as there are more stronger intermolecular force of attraction. Let's see the option. In question we have the order of increasing boiling point so therefore the last one must have the highest boiling point. As in A the last one is lubricating oil and it is below bitumen so therefore this is incorrect. In B, we have highest boiling kerosene and lowest boiling is diesel. But this is incorrect because diesel has highest boiling point and kerosene has lowest. In C, we have gasoline and diesel. First one is gasoline. Then we have naphthalene, then kerosene, then diesel oil. So this shows the correct order of increasing boiling point. In D, we have kerosene, then lubricating oil, then naphthalene. So this is wrong. So correct option is C. Question 36, which statement about members of a homologous series is correct? Now what is homologous series? Homologous series is actually present in organic compounds. It is the series of compounds present having the same functional group. For example, in alkanes we have methane, ethane, propane, butane and so on. A. They are elements with the same chemical properties. Now these are not the elements, these are actually compounds. So therefore this is incorrect. B. They are compounds with the same functional group. Now in a specific homologous series, the functional group is always the same. For example, in alkanes, the functional group is single carbon-carbon bond. So this is true. C. They are atoms with the same number of outer electrons. These are not the atoms, they are actually compounds. They are molecules with the same boiling point. Again, they are not molecules, they are compounds. And the boiling point is not the same. It is actually increasing with increase in the number of carbon and hydrogen atoms. So therefore, option B is correct. Question 37. Increasing the number of atoms in one molecule of hydrocarbon increases the amount of energy released when it burns. What is the correct order? Let's find out the atoms present in each of these. First one is ethene. The formula of ethene is C2H4. Then we have methane. The formula of methane is CH4. Then we have ethane. The formula of ethane is C2H6. Let's find the number of atoms. In ethene we have C2H4. So total number of atoms is 6. 4 hydrogen and 2 carbons. In ethane we have 6 hydrogen and 2 carbon so the total number of atoms is 8. In methane we have total number of atoms as 5. Again in ethene we have 6 atoms, in methane we have 5 and in ethene we have 8. In methane 5, in ethene 8, in ethene 6, in methane 5, in ethene 6, in ethene 8. So we can see that indeed the number of atoms are increasing so therefore energy will also be more. So therefore D is the correct option. Question 38 which statements about ethanol are correct? The formula of ethanol is C2H5OH. 1. Ethanol is made by reacting steam with ethene at 300 degrees centigrade. We have C2H4 and there is double bond present between the carbon atoms. This is ethene, it reacts with steam and what happens that one hydrogen goes to one carbon atom and OH goes to the other carbon atom. So it will become C2H5OH. This is true. 
2. Ethanol is made by fermentation at 55 degrees centigrade. Now fermentation is natural process and it needs yeast but the temperature is quite high for yeast so therefore this is wrong. 3. Ethanol burns to produce carbon dioxide in water. We have C2H5OH which is ethanol. It combusts in the presence of oxygen and forms carbon dioxide and water. So this is correct. 4. Ethanol contains a carbon-carbon double bond. Let's draw the structure of ethanol. We have two carbon atoms, one oxygen, one hydrogen, and three hydrogen with the first carbon atom, two with the second. So there are no double bonds. So therefore, this is incorrect. The correct option are one and three. So therefore, B is the answer. Question 39. Some properties of an organic compound J are listed. It is a liquid at room temperature. It is soluble in water. A solution of J reacts with calcium carbonate to form carbon dioxide. A solution of J has a pH of 3. In which homologous series does J belong? A. Alkane. Let's suppose we have methane. Methane is a gas at room temperature. So therefore this is incorrect as it should be liquid. B is alkene. The example of alkene is C2H4. This is also a gas at room temperature, so this is incorrect. For C, we have alcohol, C2H5OH. This is liquid at room temperature, so this is true. It is also soluble in water because of the presence of hydrogen and oxygen. This is also correct. A solution of J reacts with calcium carbonate to form carbon dioxide. Now, ethanol does not react with calcium carbonate. So this is incorrect. D is carboxylic acid. Let's suppose we have ethanoic acid which is C2H5COOH. Let's find out the properties. First one is it is a liquid at room temperature. This is true for carboxylic acid. It is soluble in water as it is an acid so it dissolves in water to form H positive ions and ethanoate ion. 3 is a solution of J reacts with calcium carbonate to form carbon dioxide. As it is an acid, so it does react with calcium carbonate to form CO2 along with the salt of ethanoate ion. So this is also true. 4 is a solution of J has a pH of 3. As it is an acid, so the pH should be below 7. So this is true for all options. So therefore answer is D. Question 40. Which polymers or types of polymer are synthetic? 1. Carbohydrates. Now, carbohydrates are pr produced by plants in the form of fruits or vegetables. So, this is incorrect. 2. Is nylon. Nylon is synthetic in nature. So, this is true. 3. Is proteins. Proteins are also formed by the body. So, this is natural. 4. Is terylene. Terylene is synthetic in nature. So, option 2 and 4 are synthetic. So, therefore, answer is D. Thank you for watching. If this paper was useful, then please subscribe to this channel. You can also share this video with your friends. See you in the next one. Till then, take care.